All right, so I want to welcome everybody for joining us today. Um, my name is Jennifer and I work with Wentzville's Parents as Teachers program. So about six years ago, Barfield Early Childhood and Parents as Teachers teamed up to start offering these parent groups to help support our parents with some of the issues that they might be experiencing at home. It's been such a wonderful community of support for parents to feel like they're not alone and just to have those resources available. Um, one of the perks of one of the few perks of COVID was the, having the ability to go virtual with our groups. This has allowed us to record all of these meetings and we have them posted on the Parents as Teachers website and on the Barfield website. Um, so if you want to view any of those other um, recordings, just go to either of those websites and click on Virtual Parent Group Library, and then you can have access to all of the recordings. Uh, we definitely encourage you to check them out and pass along that information to anybody that you feel like might benefit from it. So just to kind of remind about Parents as Teachers, we are a free program through the school district, and we provide information um, to parents who have children ages birth to five. Um, so if, even if your child attends Barfield, First Steps, or, or um, gets support through organizations like Walker Scottish Rite Clinic, we highly encourage you to maintain your visits and your relationship with um, parents as teachers. So we are so fortunate today to have Sarah Schmidt with us with Walker Scottish Rite Clinic, and she is going to present on the topic of speech articulation. So throughout the presentation, please feel free to unmute. There's just a small handful of us, so... Um, Feel free to unmute. I'm terrible with technology. So if you put something in the chat, that's wonderful. I may or may not find it. So um, chat away or unmute. But thank you for joining us. You're on, Sarah. All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about my child didn't qualify for speech. Now what? Um, my name is Sarah Schmidt. Um, like Jennifer said, I am a speech language pathologist. Um, I work for the Walker Scottish Rite Clinic, and I'm just going to put in a little caveat that um, I'm at home right now, and I have um, warned children and pets to not come into my office, but if you hear barking or children in the background, um, that is also the wonderful joys of Zoom <laughs> or Google Meet or virtual meetings, so um, hopefully they will keep themselves busy. I gave them things to do. Um, but just so you know, there's a barking in the background or something like that. They're being crazy. All right. So let me just, how do I get here? Oh, too far. Sorry, guys. I have not used Google Meet before. So I just want you to all to know that we're, I'm learning along with you. So I am a pediatric speech language pathologist. Um, I graduated from Fontbonne University in 2004. I worked for 14 years um, in the public school sector in St. Charles County. Um, I've been at Winsville, Fort Zumwalt, and um, Francis Howell. Uh, for the last five years, I've worked at the Walker Scottish Rite Clinic. We are a nonprofit, donor-funded speech and language clinic for children ages two to six, and all of our services are free. Our main goal is to reach children who are unable to reach receive services elsewhere. And we have seven locations throughout the St. Louis area. Um, we have a Troy location, um, a location at Maryville University, one in Union, Missouri, one down in Arnold, one in St. Louis City, one in North County. Um, we have a bilingual location um, at Southside Head Start in St. Louis City. Um, and then we also offer uh, virtual services as well. Um, we, um, oh, I also own a private practice within St. Charles County um, called Foundation Speech and Language Services. Um, so um, same thing, I just provide in-home speech and language therapy on the days that I'm not at Walker Scottish Rite Clinic. Um, I'm a mom of three boys, or as you can see from the picture, one boy now and two men. Um, my middle son was diagnosed with a phonological disorder at age three. Um, we used to joke that he spoke his own language because he had a lot of um, speech errors. And uh, later on, he was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. So I have worn the professional hat and the parent special education hat, um, which um, has given me a different perspective um, as far as parent education goes and um, really seeing things from both sides. Um, so why isn't my child eligible for speech therapy in the schools? So way back in 2008 um, or 2009, 
uh, DESE, which is the, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, changed the criteria for public schools. Um, and they stated that schools could only diagnose single sound errors and not phonological processes. Um, and so that significantly dropped the number of children who qualified for services. So then in 2017, DESE again changed the eligibility criteria in public schools that children now must have a 12 month delay from when a sound or sounds are expected to be mastered. So for example, um, Susie produces, oh, sorry guys, Susie produces T for K, um, and D for G. So she might say tootsie for cookie or um, dog for dog. Um, and so this error substitution is developmentally appropriate until age three and a half. So prior to 2017, if your child, if Susie did this, she could start getting services at three and a half. Um, but after 2017, school districts had to wait 12 months from when that developmentally appropriate age was. And so now Susie cannot get services within the school district until age four and a half. Um, so. so let's talk a little just a little bit about speech sound impairment versus phonological impairment, because back in that 2008, Desi said schools really need to just be looking at um, speech sound impairment and not that phonological impairment. So. The issue with that is that many, many, many preschool children present with phonological impairments instead of speech sound impairments. So what's the difference? So phonological impairments impact a group of sounds and are the child's attempts at producing correct speech, producing the adult model. And phonological impairments follow specific language-based rules, whereas speech sound impairments impact just one or two sounds and they don't really follow any language-based rules. Um, so some examples of that um, for speech sound impairment are F for TH. Um, so maybe your child says they're free instead of three, or um, they have a thumb instead of a thumb, or W for R. So they're gonna pick up a walk, um, or they're gonna ride their bike. Um, and then it also includes things like distortions, like a frontal lift. So maybe that tongue flips out between their two front teeth when they're saying their S and Z sound. Whereas a phonological impairment, um, again, focuses on those predictable rule-based errors. And so a couple examples of those would be stopping. So you're producing a T or a D for all sounds with airflow. So instead of soap, they say tope. Um, instead of zipper, they say dipper. Um, or they're omitting sounds like final consonant deletion. They're uh, leaving off that last sound in words. So bow for boat or guff for gum. Um, and so those would be more common errors that they, so when you have final consonant deletion, it's impacting all final consonants. It doesn't matter what speech sound, specific speech sound that is. All right, and so I've included a couple of charts here, just also kind of highlighting the difference. Um, and so these are from mommyspeechtherapy.com and I've included a link to that website on this slide. She has lots of great resources um, and a whole section of like free downloads that are really great. But these are her speech sound development charts. So when we're looking at just specific speech sounds, um, you're gonna look at that chart on the left there. Um, so by age two, we would want kids making B, P, M, D, H, N. Um, three, we're looking at that, um, F sound, G and K, uh, four, uh, we get into that qua blend, like queen and quit. Um, at age five, uh, we're getting into quite a few more sounds, six and seven. Um, so you can see where um, some of those sounds that you might see your child making errors on at age three or four, those are those later developing sounds, R, L, D. Um, and then on the right hand side are the phonological processes and we talked about stopping and fronting um, that T for K, D for G um, and final consonant deletion. So this chart just goes through some of those and um, when that phonological process tends to disappear um, or child's, children stop using it. 
um, I know the print is kind of small on this presentation, um, but um, like I said, I've included that link to mommyspeechtherapy.com, and so you are able to go there and print either of these or both off for free. Um, so how can I help my child at home? So we're going to talk about four main things today. Um, we're going to talk about web resources, um, applications um, for a tablet or um, iPad or Android, um, what to do with books, and then private therapy, whether it be um, free private therapy or paid private therapy or therapy that's covered by insurance. We'll kind of just talk about all the options today. Um, so, um, so web resources. So two websites I consistently send parents to are mommyspeechtherapy.com and Home Speech Home. Um, they both have word lists if you're stuck trying to come up with words to practice. Um, and then they have the developmental charts like the two that we just talked about on the previous slide. And then for social media, I recommend parents to follow um, a few of my favorites. So Jenny Bjorum is a speech language pathologist. She's originally from Kansas City and she attended St. Louis University. She is a childhood apraxy of speech expert. Um, but her Instagram account has lots of great ideas on how to support your children at home. Amy Graham also gives great tips on how to work on certain speech sounds at home, especially some of those later developing sounds um, like L and R. And then Rebecca with Adventures in Speech Pathology is another great account to follow. She has many resources for what we call minimal pairs. Um, so that's a therapy technique that you can easily implement at home. Minimal pairs are a pair of words that differ by one speech feature. So if you're a child working on putting the S on your S blend, so you say top first stop, um, you can practice words like top and stop, pin and spin, peach and speech. Um, so they're kind of like rhyming words a little bit. Not always if you're working on like um, final consonant deletion, but, um, but she's great. She has lots of resources um, to work on those. Um, pin and spin is one of her favorites, one of my favorites, because if you're playing a game at home, um, you can work on every time you're taking a turn spinning that spinner and saying the word spin. Um, I also love Peachy Speechy. She's on Instagram, um, but what I really love are her YouTube videos um, that show how to make speech sounds. So you can go on to YouTube and we'll look at one of those um, coming up. Um, but it's just a great resource for parents who want to assist their child at home. She has one of those big mouths and she shows like where the lips need to go and the tongue, tongue needs to go. And um, so she just does a really great job. And then Graceful Expressions um, is a great Instagram account. She has excellent informative slides, not just for speech, but also for language development for our toddler and preschool ages. Um, so we're going to take an in-depth closer look at these um, at these resources. So I'm going to go ahead and click on mommyspeechtherapy.com. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I'm not a I'm, I'm a Zoom girl, um, so I'm not 100% sure what will happen um, if it'll show you guys. Oh, it does. So share this tab instead. Okay. So here is mommyspeechtherapy.com. Um, she is great. Um, she has this great free download tab, and so. Um, I'm going to click on that. And all of these, I know I'm kind of scrolling now kind of fast, but she talks about apps um, for your tablets, um, different activities. Um, here is that speech sound development chart. Um, and then she just has word lists down here. Um, so vowels, the P sound, the B sound, and it goes all the way down. Um, and these are just free resources um, that you can use. And so let me close out of that. All right. And then home speech home. Am I sharing still, Jennifer? Not right now. Okay. <laughs> Jeez <laughs> Louise. I'm so sorry. Oh, I would be doing the same thing, sister. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Let's. Nope. Go back. Okay. Um, let me go back into here. I apologize, you guys. Uh, tap. Okay. Let's go back to, okay, so I'm going to share Home Speech Home. Um, and this is a great website. Um, 
it has some ads on it, which annoy me, but, um, but it has good information. So she has, again, more speech therapy word lists, um, lots of activities that you can implement at home. And then she talks about some different apps also. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing this and then go back to my previous one. Oh, don't do that. Okay. And. All right. All right, so we are gonna go ahead. And so this is Jenny Bjorum and she is working on the Yes Stand with a kiddo in speech therapy. Um, and honestly, they're just putting stickers on paper. Um, I've never met a kid that didn't wanna work for stickers. Um, and so sometimes I just draw circles all over the paper and then they get to put a sticker in the circle each time. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and watch this. What? Lala. Try again. Uh, e. Yep. Say your whole word. E. E. Yellow. Nice. I like how you used your EQ to help you get yellow. Do it again. E yellow. Nice. One more time. E yellow. Beautiful. Here's your flower. All right, and so that's Jenny. Um, and so that's something easily reproducible at home. Um, you know, Dollar Tree, um, do Target Dollar Spot, um, Five Below, they all have, um, I, I like Five Below sticker um, selection the best, but um, they all have um, stickers. And so, you know, get one of those word lists from Home Speech Home or from um, mommyspeechtherapy.com and just start, you know, have them say it a couple times, two, three, four, how many ever time, however many times your child will tolerate, and then they get to put a sticker on the paper. Um, goes a long way. Um, what color you want? All right, so here is um, Rebecca with Adventures in Speech Pathology. She's actually doing um, a speech therapy activity with her daughter. Um, and she printed off, um, I know on mommyspeechtherapy.com, um, her word list come with pictures. And so you can print off duplicate copies or one copy and cut them apart. Um, and so she's gonna do a little fishing game with um, some paper clips and a magnet um, with her daughter. So we're gonna give a quick look at that. Just an, another idea of how to practice some things at home. Okay, and she's so I'm Australian. Gonna put, um, my little paper clips on here. You ready? And then we'll do some fishing. Can you say this one? So this one is mess. But you watch what I do. But you watch what I do with my teeth. My teeth are touching. Ready? I go mess. Mess. Well, can you do it really quietly? Mess. That's nice. So, so I'm gonna put one on, like that. I'm gonna put it down. Next one. <gasps> Look. Face. Hi. Really tiny S. Face. Put your teeth together. Face. You're trying so hard. Here we go. Let's do horse. That was long. Did you remember to keep your teeth together? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do... We have this come past our house. Ready? Buzz. Now, your tongue's stuck out. Bye. Now you've got to keep your teeth together. Bye. Really quiet like this. Bye. Good, that's it. I like when you smile. Your tongue keeps poking out. We've got to keep it down. So I'm going to put some more down. Oh, we live in a house. That was it. You had your teeth together. High five, sweetie. Good job. So I'm going to put another one on. Where are we? Bus, right? The bus? Uh, the bus is there. See? Oh, we play with this. Ready? Watch my mouth. My teeth are going to close. Dive. Yeah. Your tongue stuck out. You've got to have your teeth together. Ready? Dive. Yeah. Oh, we put ice in our glass. Ice. I like that one. I'm going to put them on. 
Should we just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah? How about we do race? We like having a running race, don't we? Yes. Race. Yeah. I like that. I'm helping you make sure that um, your teeth go together. Otherwise, your tongue sticks out and it sounds like this. Race. And that, oh no, I don't like that slushy, which they do really quiet and soft. Okay, so now we have ice, bath, bus, face, horse, house, race. Oops, I've got to put one on. Die. I like that one. I like that little smile. And what you can do, I'll leave these ones over here. You can take my fishing rod. I'm going to twirl it a bit. You can take my fishing rod and you have to put the crab down and you're going to pick up one of the pictures and we'll say which one that you get, okay? Okay. Okay. Here you go. Let's see what you get. You got... Oh, look! We got bus. Make sure your teeth are touching. Bus. 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 That's it, bus. We got bus. What else are we going to get? That's it. We got, ready? House. Oh, I like your smile. You kept your teeth together. Yep, drop it down. You go. Oh, I like this one. Watch my teeth. You're not going to see my tongue. My tongue's going to hide. Watch, Mummy. Pause. That's it. A little tiny S. It's so soft. Yeah, you can you can help yourself. Yeah. Click. Are you ready? Do you hear how my S is really long? Face. You ready? Mess. Look at all the mess she made. You like making mess, don't you? We've got three left. I've got ice, dice, and race. Do you hear mummy's long S? Ice. Your turn, you say it. Ice. Say it soft. Ice. Say it again. I like that. Your teeth were together then. There was no tongue poking out. Oh, you ready? We have dice. Hi. When we play our games, we roll the dice. Last one is race. I like having a race with you. Gotcha. Are you ready? Let's do this one. Race. Really quiet and soft. Race. That's it. Now your job is to take off this with your hands. You take off the paper clip. There you go. You pull it off. That one was for race. Say it after mummy. Race. Yep. This one is for dice. What's this one? Ice. That's it. We're going to take off the one for mess. This one is face. Say it again. I saw your tongue. Nice and soft and your teeth were together. That tongue has to hide. Say it. Horse. Horse. Yes. House. House. Yeah. You're trying to keep your tongue back. Last one. Does this sound right, Bus? That didn't look right, did it? No. Oh, you poked your tongue out too. That doesn't sound right. That's the teeth together. So miss? Yep, take it off. Oh, all done. High five. Good job. All right, so what I love about that video is she's down on her child's level. They're face to face, whether they're, you know, so, you, you know, that is a big important thing. You want your child to see your face so that they're seeing the correct way to say the sound. Um, she got lots of practice setting up the game. 
she got lots of practice playing the game. She got lots of practice putting the game away. So um, very simple activity, um, easily re reproducible at home, um, but very effective. Um, I also like what Rebecca did in this video when she said it the way her child said it um, so that her child could hear and see um, what that what her errors were looking like and sounding like on another person. So, you know, that's always a fun game to play too. Like your child gets to be the teacher and you make the sound error and they have to correct you. So, um, all right, here is Peachy Speechy. She is, we're gonna watch a little video of her. She also has, like I said, if you go to her YouTube channel, she has every sound under the sun. So say you had your eligibility determination meeting and your child has sound errors, but they don't um, meet criteria to get speech therapy. Um, but the great news is you have this evaluation report that tells you these are the sounds your child has an error. So then you go to PGCG and she will tell you how to fix it. Um, so we'll watch a quick video on how to say the G sound. Hi, I'm Meredith from Peachy Speechy. I'm a speech language pathologist, and today I'm gonna to show you how to say the G sound, G. To say your G sound, you're gonna put the back of your tongue up, up, up to touch the top of your mouth at your soft palate. The tip of your tongue is going to stay down. Your voice is going to be on. Watch me, G. It can be kind of hard to see the G sound in my mouth, so I'm gonna show you with this model. This is your soft palate. It's also called the velum. This is the spot where you're gonna lift the back of your tongue to. Remember, your tongue tip is gonna stay down. But the back's gonna go up. Your voice is gonna turn on, and then you're gonna release the sound. So we're gonna pretend that my hand is the tongue, and it's gonna kind of look like this. G, G, G. It's important that you put the back of your tongue up for the G sound G. If you put the tip of your tongue up, it'll sound like D, and that's the wrong sound. The back of your tongue goes up for G. Now, I'm gonna say the G sound, and then you're gonna say it after me. Are you ready? G. You try. G. So it allows you try. for lots of practice um, How while you you're watching the video with now, your child. You're gonna say the G sound 10 times. You're gonna see mouths on the screen that look like that. Every time you see a mouth, say your G sound. Be sure to put the back of your tongue up and turn your voice on. G, just like that. Great job practicing. I made a song to help you remember how to say the G sound, and it goes like this. The back of your tongue goes up for G. Turn your voice on, say your sound like me. G. Now, I'm gonna sing it again, and you can sing it along with me. The back of your tongue goes up for G. Your voice turns on, say your sound like me. G. Good job. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a great time practicing the G sound. If you feel like you need some more practice, just play the video again. <laughs> to the speech pathologists and parents watching this video, I wrote a book. It's called I Can Say the K and G Sounds. This is a great book. It is step by step through saying the K and G sounds. It starts out targeting the sound just in isolation and works its way up through phrases, sentences, and oral reading. So check that out. You can download it at pgspeechy.com. I also have tons of other fun things for speech language pathologists, like fun t-shirts, like this one. I've got coffee mugs, tote bags. Okay. Hi, I'm Meredith from Peachy Speechy. I'm All right. Um, so next up, uh, those were all of my favorite web, web resources. There are lots of other ones. Um, another one that I currently use often in therapy is called Pink Cat Games. Um, and 
uh, you can have a free, um, you can access some of the games for free and then some of it is paid. Um, but you can pick the sounds um, that your child's working on and it has things like Feed the Unicorn or Feed the Polar Bear or right now they have um, Find the Leprechaun and you click on different uh, pots of gold. Um, so that's another great resource also. Um, so we're gonna move on to applications. Um, so there are a few different applications that um, are inexpensive or free um, for working on speech sounds. Uh, my personal favorite that I use often in therapy is called Minimal Pairs. It is $1.99. Um, and it ha comes preloaded with a lot of um, different minimal pairs already, but then you can also make your own boards too, which I love as a speech therapist. Um, but as a parent, they have um, lots of blends that kind of we talked about earlier. If your child is leaving the S off the blend, um, they have um, different boards, um, speech cards on there that you can do top and stop, um, tar and star. Um, and different ones like that. So it's a great um, inexpensive application um, to practice speech sounds. Uh, Quick Arctic is free, um, but it is a lot of later developing sounds. So it, it includes um, R, L, S, C, H, S, H. I think it includes the just sound. Um, so, uh, but it's free. Um, and uh, Minimal Pairs uses drawings. Um, Quick Arctic uses real pictures. And so sometimes I feel like those can be better um, for younger kids than the drawings. Um, sometimes they don't always know what the drawings are. Um, another popular one is called Articulation Station. Uh, there is a free version and a paid version called Pro that most speech therapists have. Um, but the great thing about the free version is if your child just needs to work on K and G or just needs to work on S blends, um, you can buy just that deck and I think they're 99 cents a piece. So the app is free to download. Um, I think it comes with the P sound. Um, but like I said, if your child needs to work on just SH or um, just a single sound, then you can always just purchase only that deck. Same with Articulation Station Hive. The difference, they're made by the same company. The difference is Hive, um, takes it down. So Articulation Station does uh, words, phrases, and sentences. Articulation Station Hive um, kind of goes the other direction. It does single sounds, um, syllables, and then words. So um, for our younger kids, the Hive is really great because maybe you just need to like work on estab establishing um, a K sound or an L sound, and it'll let you do that at just a single sound instead of you know, lion, you're just working on saying la, 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 la. So um, another great one is articulation cards. It is also um, inexpensive. It's $1.99 and it comes um, just full of um, real picture articulation cards. Um, and so here's some pictures of those. This minimal pairs over here, that is the one that I love. Um, I use that a lot in therapy. And I also have articulation station. Um, as you can see, they work on a phone or a tablet. Um, and then this is articulation cards. That's a picture, a screenshot of that one. So it uses real pictures. Um, articulation station also uses real pictures, which is, um, I find nice for some of my, some of my clients. Um, we will go ahead and move on to books. Um, so two really great websites are Anna D. SLP. Um, she has a post on there called the best books for preschool speech therapy. And then there's another one um, on speechsprouts.com um, that's Soundloaded Storybooks for Articulation. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and fumble through sharing um, this tab with you. So um, Anna D. SLP, um, she just does them by, she does not do by sound. Um, but what I like to say is if you're reading books and you have a book like Where is Maisie? You do not have to call mouse Maisie. You can call the mouse Kelly if your kid, if your child needs to work on the K sound, or you can call the mouse Stacy if you're working on S blends. Um, so always know that you can rename those characters with your child's speech sounds that they're working on, and um, and get more practice 
in. Um, so Dear Zoo is one of Anity's all-time favorites. It's also one of my all-time favorites. I love it. And I love um, Lista Flat books. Um, they're my favorite also. Um, repetitive books, so Usborn books like Who's Making That Mess or Who's Making That Smell, um, those are really great books um, for speech therapy. But she's got a nice li list. Um, oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, action books um, are really great. Uh, we're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a lion hunt. Those are some of my favorites. Um, interactive books. I love these Never Touch a Monster. Um, there's like a whole slew of them at Target. Um, and they're just a lot of fun. Um, the kids seem to love them. Or the Usborne books, like That's Not My Monkey or That's Not My Train. Those are really great. Um, I love that there's a chick or a mouse that is hidden on each page also. So that's her website. Um, And let me go back and share my other presentation again. And then Speech Sprouts is great because they, she has a whole list by sound. Um, and so I love that. Um, so if you're working on the gus sound with your kiddo. So the day the goose got loose, three billy goats gruff. I love go away, big green monster. Kids love go away, big green monster because they get to shout go away on every page. Um, and so even j or the k sound, um, she has the carrot seed. This week, um, I well, this week I'm doing St. Patrick's Day, but last week I did too many carrots um, and we worked a lot on the k sound. Um, so this is just a great, um, you know, if you're headed to the library and you want to go get some books checked out, um, you know, definitely come to speechfrauts.com and um, scroll down to whatever sound your kiddo's working on and see if you can get that book from the library. Um, so, all right, let's go back to this tab. Um, okay, so um, shared book reading is a great time to work on um, your child's speech sound. And I am going to share another video um, by Miss Brittany. She is another speech language pathologist that works at the Walker Scottish Rite Clinic. And she's going to show share another resource. So um, another way to find free and great information is our clinic, the Walker Scottish Rite Clinic has a Facebook page. And so we um, have a whole library also of videos um, with different topics, like how to work on this sound or shared book reading or um, phonological awareness, like how to you know start some of those pre-literacy skills with your kiddo. Um, so you can always find us um, on Facebook, Walker Scottish Rite Clinic, and go to our videos and there's just um, a ton on there. But we're going to go ahead and watch Miss Brittany today. And here today I want to show you guys a collection of books that's available in Epic Books. If you don't have access to Epic Books yet, you can contact your Walker Scottish Right Clinic therapist and they can get you set up for free. Or if you're not a client of the Walker Scottish Right Clinic yet, you can always message your child's teacher and they might be able to get you access as well. There's lots of fun books on here. This collection that I want to show you is called Sound Adventures, and they have a storybook for each letter sound or sound blend in the alphabet. Learning letters and their corresponding letter sound is really important for children that are getting ready for kindergarten. Just ignore my dog as he keeps moving over there. So it's important for children that are getting ready for kindergarten, that are learning to read, or children that are in speech therapy and are working on specific sounds like K and G or F. So these books, like I said, they have one for every single letter sound or sound blend. So let's say that your child is working on S blends. The book Sledding in Summer is a great choice. 
So what I love about these books is that at the beginning, on the first page, there is a list of the target words that you'll be looking for. So all of these S blends. So what I like to do with children that are working on that for articulation or phonology, I will practice each word on their own at the beginning. And then it's also great for children that are starting to read, that are learning sight words. It's a great way to practice just that word. And that way you know, and the child knows, what words to look out for in the story. So when I read these stories, I like to read one line at a time. Yippee, yells Yari, we're going sledding. So you'll see I emphasize the word sledding, that target word. And I'll say, okay, we're looking for a word that starts with S-L. Let's look for a word that starts with S-L. Sledding. I see it. It's at the end of the word. Sledding. Can you say sledding? And I'll repeat that for each line. A lot of these words repeat in here, so your child will start to get more familiar with each word as the story goes on. And it's just a really great way for, like I said, not just children in speech therapy, but any child learning how to read or getting ready for kindergarten. So if you have any questions about these books, about Epic Books, or about the Walker Scottish Wright Clinic, please send us a message above. We would love to chat, and we hope you guys have a great day. All right, so that was Miss Brittany. Um, and I also love Epic Books, and then there's another resource called Vooks. Um, and so many of those became free during the pandemic. Um, I believe Epic is still free for teachers and Vooks is still free for teachers. So if your um, child attends preschool somewhere else, then you could always um, have their teacher set up a free account if they don't already have one and um, include your child in their class. Um, so next we're going to move on to speech cues. So so you know it sounds your child needs to work on. You have all of these great resources, but how do I get my child to say the sound? Um, and so there's lots of different cues that you can use at home. And so one of the first cues that I use with kiddos is one that is called backward chaining. Um, and so I will start at the end of the word and then get that really solid and then move to the front. So I'll go boot or pin, 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 spin. Um, and then that way, because they've already got that motor plan down, um, but you're just wanting them to either put that sound on the end of a word or put that sound on the front of a word. And then the opposite of backward chaining would be forward chaining where you're starting at the beginning. So mum, mum, monkey, because um, maybe they're leaving off beginning sounds. Um, miming is another great cue. So you're going to silently mouth the word with your child. Um, and one really important part of this is that you want your child to be looking at your mouth when you're miming with them, because if they're looking at your mouth, then chances are they're, they're going to try to imitate what your lips are doing, what your teeth are doing, what your tongue is doing. Um, another cue is touch. So a lot of times if a word ends with knee, I will touch a child's knee. I'll tap it with my, my finger. Um, and so it'll be bunny. Um, or one that I use all the time is if we're working on that S sound, we call it our snake sound. And I just drag my arm down or my finger down their arm, or I have it do, I have them do it to themselves. We're going to work on our snake sound. Let's make our snake down our arm snake. Um, and then tapping again, so tapping boot and lightly tap on your child's arm or on their hand for that sound. Um, those are what we call tactile cues. And so sometimes just adding in another part of that brain to help make that um, connection in those neurons um, is great. Visual cues um, are another cue that you can use at home with your kiddos. So touching the back of your throat or the th your neck for your 
and gust sounds. Um, I call the P sound our popcorn sound. So I'll kind of make a, a poppy motion with my hand next to my mouth. Pop, pop. Um, and then same for snake. Maybe maybe instead of the tactile cue, I'm gonna do just a S in the air or a snake in the air. Um, another great way um, is to take video. Um, there is an app called Speech Blurbs or Speech Blubs, um, and it's kind of like Snapchat, but for speech therapy. And so they can make their face into a, a puppy or some a silly face, um, kind of like those filters on Snapchat or Instagram, um, and then practice their speech their sounds, um, but you can definitely do that through Snapchat or Instagram with your kiddo. There's all kinds of filters on that too. Um, but the great thing is, is that they're going to hear and see um, what their error, their error is and what your good production is. And you guys can compare those productions. Um, a really important cue is to slow down your rate. So um, you want to stretch out a word or a vowel sound. So we're not going to do go, 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 go. Sometimes it has to be go or stop. Um, so we're really gonna stretch out as much as we can, especially if your kiddo is doing something like uh, the phonological process of stopping and they're doing um, taupe for soap. Sometimes you'll get taupe, you'll get that sneaky T in the middle. So by stretching out the vowel sound after the S um, and slowing down, Oh, sometimes you can get rid of those um, insertions of the old error that come um, tend to pop up. Um, and then also placement. Kids are really smart. So just telling your kiddo what you want them to do with their lips. So, um, you know, oh, when we do that L sound, I want that tongue tip. This is the tip of your tongue. I want it to touch your top teeth. Let's look at that in the mirror. Oh, oh. And so some of these, a great way um, to practice this at home is um, don't go, you know, out of your normal routine. Um, I like to say, do it at teeth brushing time. You are in front of a mirror. Your child is fairly captive in the bathroom with you. Um, they're usually on a stool and um, they can, you know, they can see themselves and take a couple of minutes and practice whatever sound it is that you are working on with your child. Um, but wait, there's more. So once you have a list of words containing the sounds your child needs to work on, the possibilities really are endless. And like I just said, you wanna build that speech practice into everyday activities. So bath time, dinner time, play time, bedtime. And so ways to practice, um, I mean, I could list hundreds, um, but we don't have time for that. Um, but put a puzzle together with your child and have them say a speech word before putting two pieces together or putting a piece in their puzzle, whatever type of puzzle they're working on. Play a game and everyone has to practice a speech word before their turn. You could even sometimes say the word correctly, sometimes say the word incorrectly and see if they catch you. Um, you could get bath crayons or markers and write or draw pictures of speech words on your bath wall. Um, and then they could wash the speech sounds away with their wash rag. Um, another fun one is have a secret password of the day that contains their speech sound. And that word must be said to turn on the TV or open snacks or turn on lights. Um, one that I was just thinking of on the way home to include for you guys is I will give kiddos um, a joke of the day and then they have to say their joke um, to whoever they meet. Like, do you wanna hear my joke um, with their good speech sound? So, they're working on that gust sound. Like, how do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of silly, but the kids love it. And they're practicing their speech sounds, you know, with different people um, and, and having fun while doing it. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about is seeking private services. So you go to your eligibility determination meeting um, and man, they have speech errors, but they just don't meet that DESE criteria. And um, so you can always wait until they're four or four and a half or five 
Um, but if you would rather try to get services now than later, you always have the option to seek private speech therapy services. So the Walker um, Scottish Rite Clinic, we do provide, like I said before, free speech therapy services. Um, but with being free comes a wait list. Um, so our wait list is pretty long, um, but it, it is an option. Um, another option is local universities have graduate clinician clinics uh, that provide free or prorated services. Um, and they do provide virtual options as well. So Maryville University, St. Louis University, and Sampan University. Um, and then those speech therapy services are provided by a graduate student um, supervised by their professors. Um, I, I did it when I was in college um, at Sampan and graduate school at Sampan. Um, and I've supervised students from um, all three of those locations, um, among others. So that is um, a cost effective way to find private services. Um, our clinic um, as well, um, so you would call and get what we would call a screening to be put on our wait list. Um, and we also provide a referral sheet of additional resources for private practice therapists um, in St. Charles County. So we have lists that are specific to the counties that people live in. So um, our Arnold location gives out um, private practice there, a list of private practice therapists that are in Jefferson County. And so um, we have a list of those referrals for St. Charles County as well. Um, you know, I think, okay. So as far as seeking private services, um, some insurances do cover it. Um, some therapists provide what we would call a super bill. Um, and so it would uh, they would be an out-of-network provider, and um, that, those services would apply towards your deductibles, kind of how that works. Um, so, or, or, or it's private pay. Um, and it can get kind of pricey, but I find that many of the therapists that I refer people to from the clinic, um, you know, the, the therapists work with families really well on what's going to fit their budget and their schedules. Um, all right, so I know I'm kind of a fast talker, but um, if there's any questions, I am happy to answer as best I can. So a couple of friends joining us, if you guys have a specific situation with maybe one of your kiddos that you would like to ask, please feel free to unmute or you can put it in the drop box or the chat box, but um, if you have a situation you have a question on, feel free to ask. I don't have a specific question, but thank you very much for all the information. It was really valuable. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. That's definitely a lot of great information. Um, I had no idea that there were so many resources out there between the books and the videos and all the websites. I had no idea. Um, there's definitely a need for it, as you know, for those speech, the speech and articulation support, especially since yeah. we can't even begin to refer kids until they're at least four years old. So it's nice to know that we have a place that we can direct families and yeah. so they can have that support um, before we can refer them or so. Right. Yep. Such All a great right. resource and a wealth of information. Certainly appreciate it. Yes. Well, um, I will share my contact information with you, Jennifer. And then if Fantastic. you have families um, that have questions later, um, they can feel free to give me a call or to shoot me an email. Um, so that. Um, okay. That's wonderful. That will, yeah, we'll do that. Well, thank and you for your, letting me present today. You're welcome. And your private practice is it's Foundations Speech and Language. Is that what you said it was? It is Foundation Speech and Language Services. So I work at Walker Scottish Rite Clinic Monday through Thursday, and then I see kiddos in St. Charles County um, on Fridays. Okay. So fantastic. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you, and um, I will will download this to our library so people have access to it. Um, Great. Because I'm sure I'll watch it and rewatch it and rewatch it again, just because I'll learn something new every time. So. Well, good, good. I'm glad. All right. Well, thank you so much for All having right, thanks, me. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.